Do you have a hard time commuting around Metro Manila and other capital cities here in the Philippines? Well, try and multiply your problems by no other option and you might get close to understanding what a PWD goes through here every single day. To say it's a struggle is an understatement. Fortunately, those in need have found a guardian angel. Welcome to the Service Road, I'm James Deacon and today we're going to meet the Angel on Wheels who has made it her mission to empower PWDs by giving them an accessible transport option. I'm also going to show you what I learned about walkability in my tour around Pasay and I also tell you how to remove car odors in this round of Hey James. And we go out and talk to drivers to see how much they know about the traffic rules. Yes, I know, I know, it's pretty scary, so you wouldn't want to miss all of that. It's all coming up your way right here on the service road only on CNN Philippines. A few months back, we featured Abner Mandlapaz, a PWD who went through great lengths just to be able to move around using his wheelchair. It is this struggle that he and many other PWDs face that our first guest seeks to address with her project. To tell us more about it, let's welcome to the show, Margaret Gluer. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Jay. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here. I'll just give uh, people a quick background of what's happened here. Um, I met Margaret not so long ago and it was just shortly after we had that uh, Abner on the show and Abner described his difficulties in getting here and it almost brought me to tears on air when he described how he had to ask security guards to lift his wheelchair up the MRT um, he used to ride his wheelchair along MacArthur Highway like on mm -hmm. alongside wow. the Jeeps because uh, it was just very difficult to get a ride so later on when Margaret got a hold of me this is the quick backstory this is the elevator pitch and uh, she just asked me to introduce you to the president of Photon and when my brother told me it was you and I was thinking I've heard about you before but I really thought you were an urban myth <laughs> because there was these rumors going around the expat community that there was this lady that had funded this for the last 14 years through a foundation called Circle of Friends, built four PWD vehicles, and was just giving them to people who needed them a ride. If you had the means to pay, you paid. If you didn't, you didn't. Is That's that right. about some of that? I'm getting goosebumps as I say this. So anyway, when I met Margaret and realized she was not, a, I thought, I wonder if this person is real. And she wasn't I'm real. real. No, she's a superhero. <laughs> she's not real. Because I said, she can't be human. And she turned out to be. Tell us how you got started with Circle of Friends and why. Well, I, um, many years, well, we have been here since 1978 mm -hmm. in the Philippines with my husband. And um, met many, many people. I've done many other things, which I enjoyed very much, studying the Philippines, history, culture. But then at one point, through a friend of mine, where I, uh, an American lady, I was going to take some singing lessons. But of course, uh, a little bit too late. So I met Sister Valeriana, who is the founder of Tahana Walang Hartanan. And she said, come and have a look what I do. And I thought, I promised, and if I, I have give a promise, I should do it. So I went there with a friend of mine. We went to Cainta. And when I saw the center, and there were about 300 people in wheelchairs working there, I was so impressed at their abilities, at their attitude. And that was basically the beginning. I never knew, because I don't have anybody in the family, so I didn't really know much about persons with disabilities. And that's how it started. We did an overview. We studied the whole TWH, see what we can do for them. But transportation didn't come in yet at the time. I really, I mean, I was aware a bit of transportation, but not much. Only in 2002, my school friend in Switzerland showed me a vehicle for PWDs. And then we knew how to build a vehicle. And we built the first one in 2003. And that was based on an L300 vehicle? Then, no, that was a Kia 2700. Okay, 2700. But then they discontinued that one. And we were lucky, the Zurich Family Foundation, they did, a fa they did a golf tournament and they shared their proceeds. So I already had a big donor and we were able to build the first one. You also increased the fleet from one to? To four. To four, and you left one with the Hanan? Yes. 
and then you kept three. Yes. And then when, when you contacted me or through my brother, mm -hmm. why did you contact me and what, what, for what reason? Well, already for a while, for quite a few years, we really had been looking at what would be the next mm -hmm. generation wheelmobiles. And, um, and with our manager, Clarice, mm -hmm. who is here with us, um, we, um, she had a friend in Photon, maybe I read about Photon, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and we went to Palintawak, mm -hmm. and um, we didn't really see anything. And only as we left, they said, but we have this car, and it was the car we had been looking for. Okay, well, from there, if you don't mind, I'll pick up just a little bit. And so, with that, when I realized Margaret wa Margaret was not a scam, mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry, but you know, we, can, we get jaded nowadays, we get scared, should I say, and I realized that her intentions were pure. Not only did I introduce her to the uh, president of Photon, we actually got a meeting with him, and in the meantime, before the meeting happened, we decided to just sort of do a little fundraiser for you. And uh, we just put it online, go get funding, and we asked people to pitch in. And then soon when this whole Uber Grab issue blew up and the tagline the Filipinos were worth driving for became a, a sort of a tagline for every, everyone sort of knew it, um, people started making shirts and we realized okay, um, what are we going to do with these shirts? Because they were just landing here. So we decided to sell some of these shirts. So on top of the half a million pesos that we got from that's from the weekend. Oh, wow. Margaret, I just wanted to that give this to you on the air. This is from generous people from the Vios Cup and from BGC when we did a couple of events and they bought some shirts. I want to add that to the pop. That That's courtesy of amazing. Service Road viewers and people on the Facebook page. So put that towards it, but it doesn't end there. Okay. It is absolutely amazing. There was a challenge that um, later on I wanted to hit at least half a million pesos. And I said, if I can hit half a million pesos, I will sing a song for you <laughs> live on television. And they called my bluff. So let's take a look at a very short clip of me doing Great. that. You're my Mona you're, you're my rainbow skies. My only prayer is that you realize you'll always be beautiful in my so there you go. That's my rendition in a jeepney, Margaret. I sang in a jeepney to all these people. But you know what? The reason I was so desperate to hit the 500,000 is because a mystery donor said that if we hit 500,000, he would double it. And so I can now reveal the name of the mystery donor. It's from Grab Philippines, the ride sharing company. It really is. And they wanted to be here today, but um, we don't have enough time. But we'll do a ceremonial handover later. So now I can tell you that we've hit. One million something, something, that something, plus that. I don't know how much that is, 30 something, 35 or 37. I'm not sure exactly how much that is on top of that. Plus Photon have agreed to sponsor. How much did they say they would agree to sponsor? I think half. Half of the van. Yes. So we have more than a van now. We have more than a van. And, and, and I know it's the right time and to meet you. I think we are just going to fly from now on. We're going to go global. Well, you can thank these people over there. You can look in that camera and thank the people over there because it's, I'm just a vehicle here. That's all I am. It's those people in that camera there that did this for you. So That's you can right. just say something to them. Thank you. Really, we really, um, we really um, know this is the right time for us to fly. We have... Uh, not just James, I have a fantastic manager. We have so many good people. Mm -hmm. And um, we, uh, we know that um, a wheelmobile is so much needed. Well, thank you to all of those people who made that possible. And for Photon for also kicking in, donating half of that vehicle, and more importantly, helping us build that down to a price. And hopefully we can find we can put it on. I just want to see. I just want to see that day where we can finally just get them to get the same transport options that we exactly. do. Exactly. Because the Filipino PWD is definitely worth driving for. Thank you very much, Margaret, for being on the show. In just a bit, we take a first-hand look at how commuter-friendly the streets of Pasay are. Stay tuned for that and your next round of hashtag Hey James when the service road returns. I leave you now with some of this week's top transport headlines. Metro Pacific Investments Corporation is offering to improve the services of the aging MRT3. 
In a disclosure to the Philippine Stock Exchange, MPIC said it is offering to invest up to 20 billion pesos to operate, rehabilitate, and maintain the train system.